is known by different names. I think I just like Rao. Jacob. <laughs> I like calling him Jacob. He's got so many of them, but I do believe that he's an enigma. Raila Odinga is a son of Jerome Odinga. As a family, they have faced tribulations in their sacrifice to see a better Kenya. Raila has been on forefront fighting for democracy, social and economic liberation of this country. But at what cost? How did he become this unique unifier and champion of the common man? It started at home. To help round up the Mau Mau bandits, radio controlled cars without... So what I found strange about him is that even at a young age, he liked news uh, so much that uh, he would always run home from school to come and listen to the radio. And uh, sometimes he would be sent by my mother to do errands and then he would leave me there to listen to the news. So you tell me that uh, when they start news, can you listen and then tell me what they have said? The old uh, Gingo Dinga, the, the father to Raila, was uh, thought to be a socialist. You know, at some point I think he moved from a socialist to a social democrat. And which now Raila is a very strong, one of the strongest social democrats you can, you can, you can believe in this region. I think he has been greatly inspired by his father. Raila's father is still the one who had said there would be no independence without Kenyatta. It showed what kind of a great leader Jeramog was. The first time that uh, Odinga did something very heroic was when he went to London and uh, in a conference there he declared that uh, Kenyatta had to be released, that there would be no independence without Kenyatta. Knowing Raila as a human being, is recognizing is someone who has suffered a lot. So Raila Odinga was in jail for eight and a half years uh, for fighting for multi-party democracy. And Raila Odinga suffered a lot for this country. Uh, he was a political prisoner. He came out, he was in the opposition. And he's been very consistent in fighting for Kenyans. Uh, so growing up in the same family, you have a lot of memories. Some uh, good, some uh, not so good, and some painful. And for me, the most painful memory was when I, the first time I went to see him in detention. Then he started showing me how he's been unwell. He was showing me his arms, there were a lot of marks. And he looked uh, like somebody who had been unwell. Uh, they could not allow him even to uh, eat the food that I had brought. Most of it I had to take back. It is uh, actually hell. It, was, it is the worst kind of imprisonment that a human being can suffer. First of all, uh, remember you are detained for no offense that you are told you to have committed. You are not tried uh, for any offense that you are supposed to have committed either. And uh, then you are, you are not told for how long you are supposed to last in prison for uh, for whatever you are accused of committing. And when they finally put you in prison, they feed you on the worst possible food. Uh, treatment is very scarce when you get sick. They would keep you in that prison until you confess. And if you didn't confess, sometimes you go for days without food. And you would be in that cell forever, you are taking your own urine. Fortunately, because you're not eating, you're not shitting. So you would still just do with the urine and the water which was in there. I think that was terrible. Some of my friends were even thoroughly mistreated. Uh, they would be beaten when we then met later in prison. They would tell us, they would scream and, you cannot beat me like a snake. You know how people beat up a snake? So yes, it was terrible. There was mental anguish, there was torture and physical, physical torture. Some was extreme, you can't even talk about it on national television. But they were very, very uh, cruel. Let me put it that way. He carries the scars around him, you can see. Others were not even as lucky as him, at least he's lucky, he's alive. There are those who died there. Martin Shkuku left uh, detention 
with stretchers. No, he was, he was, he was crippled. He was actually taken, I think, to Sweden for treatment. Uh, Charles Rubia, terrible. Uh, Matiba never recovered until he died. He got a stroke while in prison. A man who was a sportsman who would climb mountains. That tells a lot about the conditions in prison. Because Matiba was not a soft guy. When you look at Raila, his eye cries all the time because of the detention, because of where we were put, the way he was tortured. You know, when you cannot see and then all of a sudden you're brought into, into the light, of course your eyes are affected. So whenever I see tears oozing from um, his eyes, you know, I just say, God, please give this man a good long life for him to continue changing the life of many. In a time of test, family is best. Mary Ajuma exemplified this. When her husband, Jaramogi, and her son, Raila, were both facing tough moments in their lives. For calling out on dictatorship. Kenya must evolve a system of safeguarding interest of all Wanainchi throughout the country. In approaching Kenya problems, we should be mindful of the fact that the majority of our people are still poor and need to be uplifted. Ajuma was appealing their family. Raila's mother died while he was in detention. He found out months later. When he talked about his mother, I almost shed tears. It was so painful. The, the detention itself, learning and just pleading with the system. Just escort me, just to have a look at my dead mother, even if I don't attend anything else. Or just go and bury my mother. Then you bring me back. It was so touching. The liberation struggle would see Jaramogi and his son Raila meet in parliament after the 1992 first multi-party elections. Raila and uh, his father to be in prison, it was, uh, it, it was an expression of the same, you know, uh, of, of the meaning of uh, uh, the new era of multi-party democracy, that the people who could not have been uh, allowed to go to parliament were now both in parliament together. Uh, together with themselves and together with the rest of other detainees that wished to, like Shikuku, that uh, wanted to buy for, uh, for parliament. For them being together in parliament at that particular time, the return of multipartism, the kind of the hopes and aspirations that that, that uh, election brought, even if, even if Kanu still retained uh, power. It was obviously have been a very proud moment for, for both of them. But it was also a, a very, an, an indication that uh, the baton has been passed over. Jaramogi was uh, elderly. Everybody knew he's not going to, to last very long. And Raila was in place to take over. His father, political mentor passed away in 1994. Of course I felt sad. I felt he had not died. I wished he had not died. But then I also understood that we all have to die. Uh, but each time we die we have to, uh, to feel sorry for ourselves. Uh, but we cannot help it. So uh, I wish Jaramogi had been able to taste, to have a taste of everything he had fought for, uh, including, becomes, including becoming a president for one day, <laughs> which had been uh, a wish that he had uh, expressed. But his responsibilities left Raila a little time to grieve. People who are in positions of that nature, history demands of them that they move a lot faster.
from grieving than the rest of us. It was time to take leadership, but then that came with its own uh, complications. And I decided to quit, to quit uh, Ford Kenya and surrender his parliamentary seat and go into a by-election uh, and win re-election now on, an, on, a, on a different party. That time it was uh, NDP, National Development Party. And then he started building a, all, his movement almost afresh. We are going to formally be launching. Raylo Dinga stands out for his unique qualities and his ability to lead. At key moments in Kenyan history. As when he cemented the nation's completion of establishing multi-party democracy by opposing Daniel Arab Moy's candidate and supporting Mwai Kibaki for president. Uh, we had people, senior figures in Kano like uh, George Saitoti, vice president. There was Musalia Mudavadi, of course. Uh, people like Joseph Kamoth. They would not have dared Kalonzo Musyoka. They would not have dared defy Moy. But once Raila showed the way, they all followed him. Uh, because it came at a time when political leaders could not agree on who to leave the opportunity to run for the others, for the whole country. Uh, when they could not agree, uh, Raila was able to make that statement that was supported by everybody else. And we credit uh, Kibake's win, largely, to that uh, Kibake Tosha moment by Raila Molodinga at Uhuru Park. Before that, we were way ahead of the opposition. And NAK, the National Alliance Party of Kenya, which was Kibaki Ngilu Omalwa, were no match for us. This LDP, or basically Kanu New Kids on the Block, were no match for us because we believed Moi can never lose an election. But when they came together, and uh, Raila said, Kebake Tosha, Kebake is sufficient. Our uh, goose was cooked. I think he's a man who, who looks at the greater good. Even if at a personal level, he will have to make sacrifice or even come out the loser. That's Raila, the Raila I know. I think he was born for politics. Through all of the personal heartbreak, the political betrayals, Raila has found a way to persevere and perhaps most importantly, to forgive. And one thing about him is that uh, he forgives very quickly and totally. You know, some people pretend they're forgiven you, but, but him, he forgives quickly. He, loses, he used to lose his temper uh, first, but then he would uh, cool down very quickly and forget, forgive you uh, and totally, no matter how bad uh, you have mistreated him or what you have done to him. That, that's uh, one thing I know about him. Mm. That's when he took her from my mother. He, he was detained by Moi for nine years. And he came out and shook hands with Moi. Then comes in and says Kebake Tosha, and Kebake wins. And they betray him. And then he still comes out and shakes hands with Kebake. For the common good, for the general good of the people. Fast forward to 2018. Again, a disputed election. The court even nullifies the election, the Supreme Court. And he still comes out and shakes hands with Rook I actually wonder how he survives, because too much betrayal. 
I get betrayed by a friend and then I'm hurting, I'm crying, I feel like I want to die. And they still there in rallies saying, oh, we continue, hey, NASA, oh, Azimio. <laughs> I, I, I think I admire that about him. He has, he, he has never give up spirit. The people who have injured Raila Odinga and is able to dine and wine with them after that, then you begin to see this is a different kind of person. You know, he's a person who forgets, you know, forgives and forgets and he moves on. There is an element of magnanimity around uh, Nabaut Raila, which people have come to admire in terms of he has put the country before himself. When he put his 2007 election defeat behind him, the violence that followed and helped establish the new charter that is so respected today. You talk about the constitution in this country, then you, there's nobody whose name, whose middle name is the constitution more than Raila. He was a driving force. Uh, for, he, for, 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 for Raila, the, the fight for a new constitution was something dating back to the fight for the multi-party system. He knew that the minimal constitutional changes which allowed the multi-party system did not deal with other key underlying issues. So he was always uh, in the thick of things in, in fighting for the new constitution. I will not be intimidated. I will not be blackmailed as a speaker. Because what I'm doing, I know I'm doing it with the interest and the best interest of this nation as a speaker. And I say that I'm prepared to pay the political price, Mr. Speaker. And I think I will give him credit because there's so, there was so much stability and checks and balances. Because the two parties, Raila and, uh, and Kibaki, were almost 50 50 in terms of government. There was a lot of checks and balances. That checks and balances, you know, brought a lot of progressive development in the politics of the country. By running it, yes. and Cabinet Secretary for Justice yes. and Constitutional Affairs, yes. the Honorable yes. Martha Wangari Karua. Raila's relationship with women has certainly set him apart from other Kenyan politicians. And he chose a woman, and that speaks for what he stands for. So it speaks for who he is as a person. He could have picked men, he has picked men in the past, but he said Kenya has to progress, Kenya has to change. And not only that, you can see that the, that the support that not only his mother getting from Raila Odinga, but even from the, the spouse, Aida Odinga, who's going with Mother Karua to rallies, to meetings. So the support is actually very, very strong and very open, and shows that he believes that in Mother Karua, Kenya can change. I know him as a person who has offered himself for this nation, I know him as a person who really cares about this nation. So from the struggle um, and during the Moi regime, um, all the struggle he went through to the current situation where he had to fight for even the new constitution, you know, multi-party system, his relationship with the, first, uh, the second president, uh, Moi, and also having to know him as a family man. <laughs> Getting to know the strong women in his family has also impressed her, as it has others. Aida comes out as a very strong woman, and I think because of the period that um, Raila was on, uh, had gone to detention, you know, she suffered with her, own ch with her children. She had to be kicked out of her job. She's a teacher by profession. She has been a very strong woman, if I may put it. Um, her being uh, Raila's wife, means that she's a very strong woman. Otherwise, not any woman would stand that when, uh, and especially during, during Moi era, when uh, even the wives were being harassed. And having a very supporting wife is very, very important. Because if you do not have a supporting wife, then of course you cannot be able to achieve anything. You must be able to understand. And I think the nine years which were set uh, apart by circumstances, uh, really helped her to, be, to become more resilient. I think she's a strong woman. I mean, Aida has been a source of pillar, you know, in the Raila family. A fairly affable person. I think she's, her demeanor is good-natured. 
people like uh, uh, you know that typical African uh, uh, partner of a politician you know very supportive very radiating very I, I mean I like her I like her as a person she looks a very good person she looks very supportive she looks very genuine yeah. she's a strong pill I think I've been to one or two of their birthday uh, functions and you can see the chemistry, you, you, you can see the body language, you can see how they gel. And there is, you know, this having come and stood with each other through this journey. So there's something that binds them together, which has taken them this far. His son left this world in 2015. You know, as a mother, Losing a child, whether at a young age or at whatever age, is a very difficult uh, process and journey. And I think every time Aida even talks about Fidel, it's really still fresh even today. So it was a tough season for them. And of course, even the daughter getting sick. But as a parent, I think they have been, they believe in God and the people who have been with them and standing with them. They have remained as a strong family, but it was a really difficult journey. Fidel, of course, suddenly was Raila's heart. I know that from a very personal. I think it was his heart. Uh, we have children, but there's always perhaps one. Who is you? Uh, you could see how he was broken. Uh, parents will always feel it when they lose children. They feel it, but for this one, it was special. And still, he carried on his political struggle. <laughs> Looking at his past and then looking forward, so many of the best minds in Kenya can see the country needs Raila's leadership. His victory is for the whole country and not for himself or his allowance, alliance. It is a victory for all of us. Uh, he means well for this country. He really cares for the welfare of the people and he feels bad when he sees so much poverty and that after such a long time Kenyans are still suffering. So he really means well for the country and I'm just hoping that Kenyans will give him a chance. This selection uh, is going to win and he'll be able to heal the country and even he heal himself. He has suffered a lot of deceit. Mother Karua and Raila Odinga will be able to take Kenya in five years where many people would never have imagined Kenya could be. Always been the candidate who appeals to the people who feel marginalized and left out. the best candidate kwa sababu ashapitia mengi kwa siasa na ni mzee ambaye amekoma kwa siasa Raila Odinga and Martha Karua have been reformists all of, all, all, all over ever since they started politics I believe 100% that when they come into power they are coming to re, 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 rejuvenate our economy Adiere udhirikari ni tondu already mudu kiwe kwa pesa ciagirwo ri aguthi edhirikari ni oe pesa ciagirwo haha the change we need in this country for the best. Martha Karua is also one of the people who we can say is a liberator. She's a, I can actually call her a freedom fighter because she's been fighting for 
uh, the liberation of this economy. Her strongest ethos, or rather characteristics, uh, define with a stand in terms of corruption. She's completely against uh, corruption. If there's a healing uh, process, the right person who can uh, be dependent upon to deliver is Raina. That is why when we said prepare for a Raila presidency, the Mandela moment. Let's give Raila a chance. He has tried four times. It is the fifth time and we trust, personally believe in God, that he's going to be the fifth president of the Republic of Kenya. Let's give him a chance. He's a strong man. He has offered himself to this nation. Several times he has sacrificed. And so at this point, I'll say, let us sacrifice for him for once. Anyone who cares about this country, anyone who cares about the future of this country, should not even give you should not even give a doubt or even think twice. They should just all vote for Raila because he has gone through a very, very, very tough time trying to liberate this country. To Kenyans with Baba, you're not going to be disappointed. Comrade Raila, that's the one I like best. And I do so because ours is an ongoing struggle. It is a relationship that is based on equality and the struggle together. It's a name that I, I only offer to the best of, to the people that I trust and believe in most. Comrade Raida. <laughs> journey of a lifetime to finally captain his country. Raila Odinga, Kenya's past and future leader.